Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Kellen here with Droid Life. I've got in front of me today a couple of smartwatches, LG's Watch Urbane, and this is the Apple Watch. And then this is obviously an iPhone. Now, if you're wondering why, well, that's because Google announced today that Android Wear now works on iPhones, or Android Wear works with iOS. And so what they announced today was that the LG Watch Urbane, which is their sort of premium take on a smartwatch, uh, round smartwatch, works uh, currently with the latest version of Android Wear. And that future watches, like a new one from Motorola and Asus's new Zen Watch 2 and uh, the Huawei Watch and some other new stuff coming down the road will work. Uh, this is currently supposedly your only option. Uh, but so Android Wear now on iOS, pretty big deal, especially for those of you not interested in calculator watch designed uh, overpriced things that uh, run the most confusing UI on earth. If you want choice and simplicity and watches that look like watches, this is kind of a big deal and assuming you own an iPhone. So uh, with that said, we uh, happen to have a couple of Moto 360s laying around and uh, we paired this with this iPhone. It's paired right now. It's uh, attached together. So you can attach older devices to it, just factory reset them, run through the Android Wear pairing process on your iPhone, and they should show up. Uh, this one did. So I, if you own like the G Watch R or the original Zen Watch or a number of other early entry Android Wear watches, you may as well try it, in, assuming you're an iPhone user, and you could probably pair them. So anyways, let's talk a little bit about the whole, the whole system here, how it works. Uh, if there's limitations, and yes, there are uh, and some other stuff. So this is the Android Wear watch. I'm sorry, the Android Wear app on iOS. Uh, so you can see there, Moto 360, and that does say connected. So we are connected. I'm not not making this up. Uh, once you're in here, and if it, look, if you're an Android user, this is going to look quite familiar. Uh, but so you can see watch faces, uh, and we'll tap more. And so here's watch faces. So there's going to be some limitation here because there aren't going to be Android Wear third-party watch apps on the Apple App Store that you can install for your Android Wear device. Like That's probably not going to happen, maybe ever. So Google seems to be, um, well, first of all, you'll have your choice of you know the stock watch faces that come with whatever watch you buy. But uh, you'll notice there's I have some additional watch faces in here. So down at the bottom, there is this Get More Watch Faces option. If you tap on that, it's like Google's created this little mini... Uh, Android Wear watch face store within its Android Wear iOS app. And so you'll see like us two watch faces and uh, here's a Rubik's watch face. And so there actually are some other watch faces and uh, this one I actually installed. You can see it says uninstall because I installed it. It took forever and it was about a two and a half megabit file. I'm not sure why it took so long to download and install, but it did. Uh, but I do have it installed and this watch face is actually from that pack. So it is possible to install other watch faces. You're just kind of limited to this like mini store within an app kind of thing that Apple, or I'm sorry, that Google has going on. So you are limited though. A lot of your your favorite ones like Facer and some of those where you can customize watch faces, they're not there yet and we don't know if they will be, but they are, there are some options. So you do have some watch faces. And then if you buy some of the newer watches that are coming out, we, we get the feeling there's gonna be lots of cool watch faces to choose from. So, all right, so what else? Uh, if we go into settings, uh, you can choose a Google account to pair with. You've got Google Now settings. Uh, always on screen is there, tilt to wait, card previews, calendar cards. Uh, if we jump into calendar, you can actually choose in here if you want the Apple calendar or a Google calendar or no calendar, which is kind of nice. Uh, email cards as well. So this one's a little different though. You can get rich Gmail cards, which means when you get a card, there's reply buttons and archive and things like that. I'll show you in a second on the watch, but currently I use Inbox and Inbox doesn't have rich cards. So uh, I'll show you what that looks like, but basically you don't have any of those actions. If you use Gmail, you will. So you can voice reply and archive things and stuff, just like you do on Android. You can also block other email cards. So you know if you have Apple's email, card or apps set up. I can't imagine you will. You could block that if you want. Um, block notifications. You can block specific notifications um, from apps in case you don't want them showing up. Voice search. Uh, yeah, you c it, it's mostly a fully uh, developed app here. Again, I'll, I'll show you in a second that there are still some limitations. But uh, yeah, this is what the app looks like. And you walk through a pairing process just like you would basically with any any sort of uh, Bluetooth device. So let me set that down and pull up the watch here. So again, I uh, have watch face up and you know you can long press and uh, choose another watch face if you want. So none of that functionality obviously is gonna change. It's still Android Wear. Um, 
But here is like, see, I have Gmail or sorry, inbox notifications here that have showed up. Uh, and if I swipe over, you'll notice all I have is block app on here. Uh, if this were a Gmail, I would have reply, archive, some of that stuff. So I'd imagine developers or Google, especially with their apps, will build in some more functionality here. Um, so far though, they seem to have only done that with Gmail. So, uh, but you can swipe away individual cards and then you can see I have other individual cards here and I can swipe those away. So all that stuff works, even dismissing um, those swipe aways. So we swipe up, here is actually a Gmail card. So if I tap on this and swipe over, you'll see I do have an archive button and a delete button and a reply button. So there is that ability in there. Um, it just depends on you know the developers wanting to build that stuff in, I would imagine, and Google seems to have wanted to do that. Uh, you can see I have notifications from my Nest camera. ESPN's app sent me some notifications that are a day old that I just haven't cleared on my iPhone, but they started showing up here. Flight information, weather information, sunrise calendar is showing as well. All the Moto body stuff from this Moto 360 is working. So it seems uh, pretty fully featured in terms of just pulling in notifications. Uh, now, as far as, oops, sorry about that. As far as uh, third party apps, um, you know, that just do standalone tasks and stuff, you're just not gonna have those because somebody would have to develop an app, publish it to the, you know, the Apple App Store and then allow it to work with Android Wear. And I, I just can't see Apple letting that happen. So unless Google does an app store within their Android Wear app like they done with the watch faces, it just be sort could, could be sort of limited. Um, but you can get all of your notifications and they show up like rich cards and some of them have the ability to have rich um, interactions with them. But again, it seems like that needs to be built in. Uh, you know, voice searches work. There's some other apps in here like I can pull up the weather card, I can do Google Fit, I can check my heart rate. Uh, there's a flashlight app that's built in Android Wear now. Uh, translate is now built into Android Wear, so you can do translate translations and all that stuff. And uh, oh, you'll notice though, the the second, I'm sorry, the third card for contacts is not in there. So it doesn't look like um, Apple's allowing Google to have access to your contacts, which makes sense because Apple closes everything off. But uh, you have some functionality. So look, if you just want a smartwatch that can show you notifications uh, and Google Now cards, and you're heavily invested in Google. Like, this could be a great option. It's not gonna be um, the overly com complex thing that is the Apple Watch, but maybe you don't want that in a smartwatch. Maybe you kind of want it to be simple like this. Uh, one other thing I should point out is if you're doing a voice search, how old is LeBron James? I don't know if that worked or not. Oh, there we go. So if you do that, it'll search on here. Um, and then it'll give you an answer that screwed up my translation there, uh, or my voice to text there. Um, but if you tap on this to open, it actually opens, I think it's a browser within the Android Wear app. So it's kind of some limitations there as well, but it's, it still gives you that sort of functionality. Uh, so yeah, that's Android Wear working with an iPhone on iOS. This is also a Moto 360 working with it, which Google said maybe wouldn't necessarily work, or maybe they just want you to wait and buy all of the new watches, because uh, you can get these for like 150 bucks now, which is kind of a good deal. So uh, that's just a brief tutorial. If you guys have comments or questions or want us to check anything else out, we can do that. Uh, but for the most part, what you're looking at is a simplified smartwatch experience, just because you know Apple doesn't really allow they're, they're certainly not going to allow Android Wear to really get involved uh, on a system level here with the with the Apple. Or I'm sorry, with iOS. So you're just going to have some limitations. But if you just kind of want that basic uh, smartwatch experience with uh, cards and notifications, things like that, you know, maybe this is an option for you instead of this. So, uh, anyways, we're Droid Life, and we are out. Peace.